Hey guys, in this lecture, we will create a new virtual machine using VirtualBox 7. Now, once you open up VirtualBox Manager, if you're not at this screen already, go to Tools, click on the three ellipses on the right, and click on Welcome. Once you're on this page, click on the star icon that says New to open up the Create Virtual Machine Wizard. Alternatively, you can go to Machine on top left and click on New, or you can press Control N on your keyboard to get to this wizard now the first thing you have to do when you get to this wizard is to supply a machine name i'm going to call my machine test linux next you have to choose the folder for the storage of your virtual machine files by default it is c drive users whatever username you have on your machine and virtualbox vms to change this you can click on the down arrow go to other and then pick a folder from your pc for example, if you want to store your virtual machine files inside a folder in documents, you can go to documents, click on new folder, and you can call it, let's say, VM files, and you can select this folder. Now, I want to store my machines in the default location, so I'll click on the down arrow, I'll click on reset, and that will take me to the default location. Next, you have to supply the ISO image for the guest operating system. I have already downloaded Ubuntu Desktop's ISO for this demo but if you want to download the same image you can go to ubuntu's website which is ubuntu.com slash download question mark distro is equal to desktop don't worry i'll supply the url in the resources section of this video once you're on this page click on download ubuntu desktop then scroll down to the latest version of ubuntu and click on download and that should start your download of the ubuntu desktop distro now, since I've already got this distribution, I'll cancel my download. I'll go back to my VirtualBox Manager, click on the down arrow, and go to Other, go to my Downloads folder, and then select the ISO image. Now, once I've done that, I can either continue by clicking Next, and this will start the unattended installation wizard, or I can skip unattended installation. All this means is that you can supply virtualbox manager with the configuration settings for your guest os installation so that once it starts the installation you can leave it unattended now for demonstration purposes i'll first select skip unattended installation and then click on next on the hardware screen i can select the base memory and processor size by using the slider by default the base memory size is 2048 mb so let's use the slider to change it to 4096 which is 4 gigabytes and let's use the slider again to change the processors to two. That will take me to the virtual hard disk configuration page. Now here, I can choose to create a virtual hard disk, use an existing hard disk, or if I so choose, I do not have to add a virtual hard disk with this machine. For now, we'll use create virtual hard disk now button, and we'll leave the default size as 25 gigabytes, but please note you can select up to two terabytes of hard disk for this machine. Now, with this button, we can choose to not dynamically allocate the size and pre-allocate full 25 gigabytes to this virtual machine. Now, I'll cancel out of that and then click on next. This will take me to the summary page. But let's go back and demonstrate what happens if you uncheck this and use the default method. So once I've done that, I'll click on next. It'll first ask me for a username and password for my guest OS. The default is vbox user and the password is change me i can choose it to be something else like it also asks me to configure a host name by default it is the machine name that we chosen in the previous page and we can also configure a domain name we can choose to install the os in background as well so let's select that for now and we'll choose the guest editions button and we'll need to supply a location of guest editions iso by default, it is under C drive, program files, Oracle, VirtualBox. But if you've downloaded guest editions at some other location, you can click on other and choose the location on your machine. I'll cancel out from that for now. And I'll click on next. It has kept my previous settings that I've chosen for memory and processor. Likewise for hard disk. Also, I'll click on next and I'll click on finish. And that should start up my VM soon. Now, since we've chosen to install in background, it'll show me the installation status under this preview bar instead of showing it to full screen on console 
that enables you to do your work while VirtualBox is actually installing the virtual machine in the background. However, if you want to see what's happening on a console, go to your virtual machine on top left, right click on it and click on show. Once you've done that, you'll see the console of your virtual machine. I'll cancel out of auto capture keyboard. Since we've chosen the unattended installation method, we can keep on working on something else. We do not need to attend to this installation or do any configuration settings. So I let the installation run. Now it took a while, but finally my virtual machine has been created with Linux installed as a guest operating system inside my virtual machine. Now, if you remember during the virtual machine configuration, we supplied it with a username and password. And you can see that Pbox user is my initial user created on this OS. So I'll click on it to log into my machine and I'll supply the password that I'd set during installation. Now, as you can see, my OS got installed. Now, if I click on devices, I'll get the option to upgrade guest editions, which means guest editions was installed as part of the OS installation as well on the virtual machine. Now, before I let you go, let us see where the files are stored on for this virtual machine. So I'll go to my file browser. Now. I'll go to C drive, I'll go to users, and I'll select the username under which I'm working, and then I'll go to VirtualBox VMs, and there I'll be able to see a folder with my virtual machine name, so I'll open that up. Now all the files for my machine, including the log files, are stored inside this folder. Now there are two things of importance. One is the VirtualBox machine definition file, which has all the configuration settings about my machine. And the other is the virtual disk that I created for my machine. Now, these two are the most important files for your virtual machine. Apart from that, we've got some logs which we can use in case the virtual machine creation fails. With this, we've come to the end of this lecture. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.